Hello. In the traditional motion picture story, the villains are usually defeated. The ending is a happy one. I can make no such promise for the picture you're about to watch. The story isn't over. You and the audience are part of the conflict. More human beings were slaughtered in the 20th century than all previous centuries combined. We're talking a congressional record, 135 million dead. Their entire purpose was to detach our culture from any moral anchors whatsoever. You look at the changes in America since 1960, perhaps, the, the whole culture has been transformed. They're coming out of the belief that the village should raise the child. Uh, and the village means the government. They have deliberately destroyed the American family, understanding that's the foundational block that uh, builds a society. We've come from uh, Norman Rockwell's America to, uh, you know, Hugh Hefner's America. If we lose the Judeo-Christian framework, we're lost forever. While the USA goes around the world expounding on the virtues of its way of life, it is obvious that those in charge place little value on human life. They are willing to kill thousands, even millions, for profit, for power, for money, for oil and resources. The USA doesn't even value the lives of its own citizens. Witness the numerous testings of weapons, drugs, medications, pesticides, GMOs, subterfuge on its own population. One of the few developed nations that fails its citizens totally in the area of the right to adequate health care, those who cannot afford it do not get it. Financially, mentally and physically robbed by politicians, banksters and industry without the capacity to understand how to care for themselves, they end up homeless on the street, begging for money being robbed, being beaten, being hungry, committing crimes because they have no choice. Then there are the families. The lives of these families are becoming pure hell. There is violence, destruction and threats. An all-out attack from the health system, the government, law enforcement and even neighbors. The state itself is ultimate. If there's nothing, no law higher than the state, and if there's no law higher than the state, there's no appeal against it. They're training them for the collective, and a collective mindset and a dependency mindset. And it seems that they, again, want to have people be uneducated, so then they do become wards of the state. They're dependent on the government to provide everything for them. So, meet the mentally ill of the USA and the victims of the many who go without being cared for. Meet the disposable people. The political pundits and politicians have started a mantra about gun control in order to gain more control over the population. It's not the guns, stupid. It's the lack of care for your own people. It is suggested that the USA get its own house in order before dictating to the rest of the world. Use the many blessings and resources of the land, the people, for your own, and not for trotting around the globe, killing others for profit, whilst those at home suffer. The capitalist system sees people as a disposable commodity to be thrown out if not productive or useful in some way. The American dream. You have to be asleep to believe it. Once people figure it out, they're going to do what people everywhere do. They're going to start protesting and they're going to start revolting. And when that happens, that's when the powers that be feel threatened 
and they use the power that they have. Meet the USA's disposable people. Oil soaked and fracked. Food poisoned. Inoculated by tainted vaccines. Fukushima radiation. Trapped by mainstream media propaganda. Spied upon by government. Impoverished. Murdered. A homeless empire created by and destroyed by the U.S. military-industrialist complex. Treated like garbage. Promulgated by the same shady cast of characters responsible for embroiling us in the endless war on terror in the first place. Americans, the disposable people. Are you, are you going to agree? Our freedoms are waning and we'll lose our liberty. Slipping one by one until there's nothing left to see. Are you, are you willing to stand with me? Are you, are you just going to let it be? The ranchers are first, but brother, next it may be me. We all stand together or we'll hang separately. Are you, are you going to the tree? Are you, are you willing to be free? It won't get any easier to regain lost liberty. Strange things are happening in this land that once was free. So, brother, I ask you, are you, are you going to stand by me? Hello, everyone. This is Lloyd Finnicum with One Cowboy Stand for Freedom. It's uh, September 2014. I'm out here on my my ranch, uh, it's great out here. The, the rains have come this summer. Uh, the grass is tall, it's still green. My cows are fat, my water tanks are full. Uh, just feeling really grateful for all the, the blessings that I'm enjoying right now. Love being out here. Don't have a cell phone, um, it's peaceful. Yeah, you know, I feel like when I'm out here that all's well, all's right, nothing's wrong, no worries. And, and I love this life out here. Um, but it doesn't take too much to see that dark storm clouds are gathering and we really need to uh, open our eyes if they're not already open. Um, we need to uh, take care of those we love. We need to have our houses in order. We need to have our relationships in order. And we never know how many days we have upon this, on God's green earth here. And we need to make the best of each and every one of them. But about those storm clouds that are gathering, it's easy to see that our government has eviscerated the Constitution. They are a lawless government, um, unwilling to be governed by the supreme law of the land, by the laws that we, the people, placed upon them. And so what do we do? Um, this thing isn't going to be solved legislatively. It's too far gone. Uh, there's too few politicians with real conviction, with real courage. The establishment is too firmly entrenched. We're not going to turn this thing around legislatively. The judiciary is in large major corrupt too, in so far as they are unwilling to, to legislate or uh, adjudicate on the simple constitution um, and you look at the executive branch 
it is just amassing power unto itself, governing by dictate, by fiat, and by executive order, completely outside of the powers that we the people gave them. So what do we do? And as I pondered on this, I wondered, where is the, the right and the wrong? Where is that line where it's wrong and where it's right in resisting this? And I come across some words by um, a man that I respect a lot by the name of Ezra Taft Benson. And he asked that question. He said, is it morally right to resist tyranny? And then he answers his own question by saying, I believe, or he said, with all the fervor of my soul, I believe that God intended man to be free. And then he went on to say that rebellion against tyranny is a righteous cause. Um, so there you have it. That's exactly how I feel. It's good to read and hear other people that feel the same way. And he went on to say, say that the fight for freedom is God's fight. So when a man stands for freedom, he stands with God. And as long as he stands for freedom, he stands with God. And even if he stands alone, he still stands with God. A man will be eternally vindicated and rewarded for his stand for freedom. So, the way I do the math, I think there's about 50 million Americans out there that love freedom as much as I do. They're willing to put their lives on the line. They're fortunes, their sacred honor, as our founding fathers did in the beginning, because the uh, conflict that's building, the storm clouds that are gathering, are over this very same issue. Will man be free, or must he be coerced? And me, for one, I'm going to live my remaining days as a free man. Maybe long, maybe short, but I'm going to live as a free man. And so, what about you? My appeal is to you, 50 million, those of you that are making the good fight, that are, are uh, standing for freedom. And I believe we still should fight through the legislative avenue, through the, uh, um, the judiciary avenue, through the legal avenue. Um, I think we should, still should make those efforts wherever we can. But we know when our natural rights are being violated, when we are being trampled upon, and it's time for us to say, no, no more. Now, if your rights are being trampled on, if your property rights are being violated, I'll come and stand with you. You can reach me on Facebook, Lavoie Finicum, or at uh, my email, LavoieFinicum at yahoo.com. Um, I'll come, I'll stand, you know, there's 50 million of us, I know. There's 50 million that's willing to stand and pull together and say, no, leave him alone. Leave his property alone. You know, no aggression, no hate, but willing to stand, willing to defend, and by all means necessary, to say, leave us alone. Don't bother us. Let us raise our families. Let us enjoy this land upon which we live. Let us be free to make our own choices. Um, it's a great land. It's a great country. I'm going to live as a free man. Um, I invite you too to stand up, defend the Constitution, the rights that are that are guarded by this document. Stand, stand for freedom, stand for the Constitution. Have a good day, everyone. This is Lavoie Finicum, One Cowboy Stand for Freedom. See you later.